maras, demon, demon, you know, which real mean is a, um, defilement, negative thoughts, negative concept, all those, you are not, you are unconquerable by them. So that's why the fifth, fifth ground is called unconquerable ground. Okay, now we are already reached the sixth ground. <laughs> I wish we achieved the, we, I wish, I wish we could <laughs> we achieved this boom as, 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 as quick as we go like this. <laughs> okay, and it's uh, uh, clear, uh, clearly manifest. And uh, in the, on the sixth ground, yeah, you know, the Chandrakit is extremely skillful. Uh, his uh, his uh, teaching is a middle way, you know. That means it's not too much in one edge, one side. He always trying to uh, us to bring in a middle way. Too much is even um, conventionally is not not really good, isn't it? Too much. Even if you know the in the Tibetan when the, the when they do prediction. If too good, it's actually not good. <laughs> if you do prediction, if said too good, that means uh, prediction is not really good. But in the same thing in here, too too much. And then you know that when you uh, not only view, even you practice, you have should have balance. You should go middle way, not too extreme way. A too extreme way, it uh, will may not succeed. So, Chandra Kiti trying to explain the Madhimaka Mulakarika through showing the profound aspect, which is emptiness, a vast aspect, which is escapeful, bring together and uh, in order to introduce of this uh, real Madhimaka, real view of the alternate view of the Madhimaka. So why, how did he explain uh, that? He just explained, um, mm, combined with the 10 Bumis and 10 parameters. And then when talk about talking about six Bumis, then he talk about six Bumis realization. When he talk about the six Bumis realization, and he talk about the, the object of the six Bumis wisdom, when he talk about the, the object of the six Bumis wisdom, there he's talking about the ultimate truth there. So that is how it, it is goes. And uh, and you know, this uh, six bumis, and and when this is a uh, actually um, largest chapter among the eleven chapters of the Madhyamaka Avatara, and also most profound and important chapter in uh, among the Avatara, we will uh, going to discuss today and next two days as well. Uh, before that, I also would like to. Uh, uh, talk about based on this, you know, start go, uh, starting emptiness, starting selflessness of phenoma, uh, phenomenal, and uh, starting selflessness of the person. It's n it's not really easy to conceive. It is not easy to understand. And. Uh, because the real nature of the phenomena or emptiness of uh, self is cannot alter by through the world, cannot introduce you easily because the emptiness as a self and the nature of the phenomena is a self actually already beyond from the express, express, you know, when um, Buddha's uh, son, Rahula, have you heard? He uh, 
uh, wrote a verse to complement to uh, wisdom. And what he said that Hyasun Jume Shiraparusan, the parameter of the wisdom or transcendent of the wisdom, is already Hyasun Jume unexpressible, inconceivable. Uh, so it's only hard to experience with self-awareness, which entirety is just like a sky. Uh, so he said like that. So it's the same and the real ultimate truth or emptiness is a already kind of beyond of us, our express, express, beyond of the, our communication. But it's so, how, then you, you will see the how difficult it will be our discussion. We are trying to discuss the thing which is uh, inconceivable to trying to conceive. Unexpressible is trying to express trying to mm, milk from panting call but it's uh, possible uh, it is uh, uh, you know so uh, however what I'm trying to say that the because of this just a listening of the emptiness just a hearing of emptiness according Mahayana according Madhyamaka it's not easy you know it's not easy. And uh, so because of that, and the Buddha was so skillful teacher, and uh, he worried about all different types of the audience or different types of the followers or listeners. He also worried that once he talk about like just using the emptiness, he worried that many, many people will probably get a nihilist view he worry about many people will falling in a nihilist, uh, nihilist, nihilist, extreme of nihilism. So because of that, he just first uh, he talk about the law of karma, four noble truths. Everything is exist as you see. You don't have to worry about it. And then you study more and bring your wisdom, grow up in m wisdom more and more. Then he also talked about using the emptiness, selflessness of phenomena, selflessness of uh, empty. So like this. So because of that, what he said that there are only three types, two types, in uh, among, uh, appealingly only two types of the student can listen the, uh, or can study the emptiness part, Panja Paramata part. But logically we can, uh, can have three kind of the uh, student who uh, are qualified to learn um, this emptiness part. I I'm going to d introduce this. You know, well how what, what he said, okay, how do you know if, if you are a teacher, how do you know whether the, your friend, Dharma friend, are qualified to learn uh, emptiness? How? The one is really clear is that uh, once I say uh, outer, outer, like emptiness, panja paramata, so uh, once you heard the word, once you just uh, got some sense of the meaning, your hairs grow up, tray is gone, and uh, if you're hicking inside the body, that means you are definitely undoubtedly have already kind of the uh, kind of the um, you know the you are right person to teach the uh, emptiness you will not falling in the extreme uh, nihilist or altar so if you are happen like that you should be happy about it and that's the first First, first one. It's a very, very daily. Um, I don't have to worry. 
Yusuf don't know what how to worry about it. To, uh, you directly can learn um, this uh, uh, emptiness. The second one is who generally we do like that, but this, this that's the we who go step by step as Buddha's taught. You know, uh, maybe you go for like first with the teaching which emphasizes more love, karma, like mm, usually what we call Theravada teaching or uh, sort of those general teaching. And then you uh, generate bodhicitta and practice mind training <laughs> and become more kind of you uh, faith or devotion is stable and you pretend you mind, mind trim, trimmed. And then once you uh, go to some interest in uh, emptiness, then it's also right time to teach. Right, you are qualified to learn the emptiness, emptiness uh, part in the Panjaparamata part. This too is uh, vividly, clearly already mentioned in the text. Then the third one is a really interesting one. Third one is a. It's a uh, third one must be very sharp uh, people. So I usually consider uh, the modern uh, people like you is this many of them third third part. Third part. So no, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, if this these uh, people who are going to learn in uh, emptiness, no necessary to be Buddhism. Even not necessary to be, you know, the who uh, kind of have interest in the Dharma, something like that. You can be non-Buddhist, but you must be really intellectual, who can challenge the Madhimaka. Who can challenge my theory? Who can challenge uh, Nagarjuna? Who can challenge Aryandeva or Chandrakirti? So then you are also qualified to learn the uh, emptiness. <laughs> so, so uh, then, so I'm I'm a thinker in a modern um, people who are universe, universe who have qualified in a university. They have already critical thinking, skeptical thinking. They have already some potential to challenge, have a rising questions. So I will usually putting them to in this third category. That's why I'm not uh, hesitating to talk about this emptiness <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, in the Buddhist vow said that if you talk about the emptiness who are not Right whistle, that means the red student, you are breaking Buddhist vow. So, and there's, a, there's, a <laughs> so there, there's a very interesting, isn't it? There's a three, um, three categories, um, uh, three, three types of the uh, person who will able to learn it. Then how now second time, like a person, what kind of teacher is qualified to, to talk about emptiness <laughs> to those people? That's the second question. It's actually the most important question. What Chantakirti himself said that? Okay, when he written this uh, um, sixth chapter, and um, he also wrote commentary, auto commentary, inside that. Then, how how the uh, sixth Bhumi seeing the nature of the mm, you know the dependent ordination? How in a sutra said that um, fifth Bhumi when into the sixth Bhumi, they go through the ten equanimity's qualities. Among them, one is the equanimity of the, all the phenomena is unrise. So he, uh, he arising question, how? How could be? 
uh, all the, you know, the how um, the Bud Sikh Bumi uh, see the nature of the depend or the nation. Then he said, no, I don't know. He, uh, he, uh, he said, I don't know, because uh, I'm uh, like a bland on the nature of the nature of uh, the depend or the nation. So I'm not actually qualified to, to talk about the nature of the depend or the nation. Then uh, again, a rising question, okay, maybe you are, you are, he pretend to be himself as ordinary beings. Actually, he is the really high realization master, but he pretend to be just ordinary being like that. Then that's what he's telling, uh, you know. So then what he said, okay, all right, so or maybe if you have not seen the nature of the depend or the nature directly, but you can talk about the nature of the depend or the nature through Buddha's Sutra, like uh, Buddha's, Buddha's Sutra, such as Panya Paramata Sutra, Lanka Avatara Sutra, all those definitely teaching Sutra. He also said that, no, I'm also, Buddha's teaching is so vast. And my knowledge is so small. And then I cannot understand the whole Buddha's teaching, the God, which without it depends on some you know, teachings, uh, go directly using the Buddha Sutra and to explain the or, uh, nature of the dependent origination. So I also cannot talk about the nature of the dependent origination by directly using Buddha Sutra. I'm not qualified, he said like that. Then again, okay, then you are not qualified to talk about dependent origination. Then what I writing, written this, well, how? Then he said, but I have, a, uh, I have a way that I will use the Nagarjuna's with instructions, Nagarjuna's logics. And uh, because of that, so now I'm qualified to talk about it. So this is what we can learn that because Buddha's teaching is so vast. Even Chandrakirti himself said that uh, we thought uh, mm, we thought uh, depends on dependent to Nagarjuna's teaching. He also can't talk uh, the directly from Sutra because uh, he Buddha sometimes it looks like uh, as I mentioned that Buddha sometimes said truly existed everything. Sometimes so there's nothing, so it looks like uh, really contradictory on it. So in these things, things uh, so need to be like uh, Nagarjuna. So then on again uh, arising he question, then how you know Nagarjuna can uh, can uh, interpret or can teach uh, the nature of the dependent origination unmistakably? Uh, how do you know? Then he said, okay, that's I know because Nagarjuna, uh, Buddha had clearly propensity, give propensity in prophesied, predicted, clearly predicted in the, his sutra. Therefore, we can rely on him, rely on him, his interpret of the Buddha's sutra. And then uh, I can talk about now the emptiness to you. <laughs> 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 so uh, he said like that. He, that also make uh, encouraged us. Already encouraged us. We can we can talk like that way. So we can use the mm, those uh, really the unbroken instruction language, and then trying to explain the unconceivable and unspeakable things trying to speak. Uh, okay. So in uh, in this way. Uh, then uh, actually I uh, yesterday um, I trying to read this prophecy 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 okay prophecy of the Buddha uh, about the Nagarjuna so I don't waste to read again why waste time to uh, read again so okay 
Then, um, uh, and then also here, uh, then Naga, you know, when Nagajuna trying to explain the nature of the dependent origination, which uh, six the Bumi seen directly, when he explain, going to explain, he explain this nature of the dependent origination uh, by un not arising logic. Not arising, not unborn, not not unborn. It's unborn logic. Not unborn means double negative, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's you know unborn logic. He used so Nagarjuna when he explained the nature of the dependent origination in um, Madhyamaka Mulakarika on the right of the beginning after him homage to Buddha, he said that uh, um, I have lost this um, quote here. Not from itself, not from other, not from both, nor from no cause. Anything, anywhere, ever possess arising at all. But Nagarjuna made a very huge statement, assert. Nagarjuna assert, said the phenomena, okay, the, before that, for sake of the, uh, our understanding, emptiness does not mean the nothingness. That's we should uh, understand. You know, emptiness, uh, emptiness. Emptiness means first, first today, what we can thing about emptiness means is that things are not truly inherently existed as we see, as we feel, as we heard. You know, things are truly and inherently existed. So here, usually, uh, we think uh, uh, everything is existed. What is because uh, it's arise or originated, 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 or emerged. Things are merged. But Nagarjuna, um, you know, okay, th here in gender, um, when Nagarjuna made this uh, for uh, for assert, nothing is uh, arising from itself, from others from both or from neither. So Chandrakas six chapter, whole six chapter trying to explain them that verse trying to uh, trying to prove well, why, how the things not arising is itself. How things not arising from others. How things not arising from both. How things not arising from neither. So please challenging me, I'm trying to bring the gender uh, logic in the thesis here. If you want to be qualified, you have to uh, challenge this. Don't have to respect. Using your <laughs> ultimate knowledge and the wisdom, whatever scientists or mod modern philosophy or which logic, which things you think uh, is a can attacked on this theory, please do so. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, so, and uh, Chandra, uh, this Chandrakete, he, uh, in, the, in the sixth chapter, he explained uh, in two category ways. Uh, common emptiness, explain common, common emptiness, uncommon emptiness. Common emptiness means the emptiness which uh, is able to uh, real, realized by Sarvaka, Pratyeka Buddha, and the Bodhisattva. Un 
common emptiness means the emptiness which only reali real realized by the Bodhisattva. So this we, we will talk uh, maybe next two, uh, two seconds. We're going to have the next two seconds. It's more complex the, than uh, this first common emptiness because that emptiness is going to talk about from pre from four extents. So it's a, uh, it's a little bit complex, but we, people like complex, right? Uh, so, okay, this is the first one. First one. Daha Nagarjuna said that nothing, outer thing means out, outer thing, inner thing. Inner thing ref refers to the, our mind, ignorance, karma, all are inner thing. Outer thing means the object of the five sense, like sound, form, mu music, uh, uh, taste. You know, the all they are the outer form, inner form, outer form. So inner or outer form, nothing is truly arise. Nagarjuna made thesis like that. For sake of understanding, for sake of, for us to understand the reality, actually Panitang himself don't have any thesis. Himself is a viewless. Himself have, have no uh, his uh, uh, promise. But the sake of us to understand this, he made it assert for us like that. Then most Buddhist philosophers being crazy about him. You know how possible we can see things. We can hear the sound. It's obviously arise. If not arise, then it's going to be like a rabbit horn. Like the rabbit horn apparently have never arise. That's why there doesn't exist in the conventional level. If the inner or outer things are not truly totally arise, then we cannot feel, we cannot see, we cannot, you know, the many Buddhist philosophers think like that, uh, not only Buddhist, uh, even an non-Buddhist philosopher. So that's why Nagarjuna has a huge group of opponents who challenge to him. And uh, there, there are four groups because uh, some, uh, some, they are accept things are uh, truly exist. Like uh, Samjaya, have you heard? It's a Hindustan tradition, philosophy tradition. It's the earliest Hindustan philosophy tradition who uh, believe uh, who uh, believe that the Atma, true soul, who also believe the Creator but not God, Creator. The principle is the permanent, functional creator uh, they who believe like that. So they are also upset with the, mm, Nagarjuna and his followers because Nagarjuna said not only sentient beings, even the Buddha himself not truly existed. He made a stand because they are not truly totally arise. So it shocked them, not only Buddhist, even in, in a, not only non-Buddhist, even in the Buddhist, among the Buddhism, there are four very famous philosophy schools, Vibhashaka school, Satatendraka school, uh, Chitramata school. They all do not accept Nagarjuna's theory here because this is Samjaya's tradition, they believe things arising from itself. They believe very stand. I will explain a little more. And the other, like, uh, mm, kind of other, uh, uh, like, uh, Buddhist, Buddhism, like, Vibhashika school, Satatantika school, Chitramata school, they believe things arising, arising from cause, which means others. Things arising from others. 
and then Jin, 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 Jin tradition. They believe things are arising from both, from self, from others, both. Then Charvaka, have you heard Charvaka? Charvaka means it's Charvaka means it's a plus of Indian um, Asian plus of it. Uh, actually, very very plus of it. But they don't believe the incarnation. They don't believe the law of cause. They said all things just come with uh, by chance. No, uh, the by chance means that they have no cause. Nobody painting the pickles feather, the color for feather. It just come without cause. Nobody body make his. They believe that nobody make this uh, rose. You know rose. Uh, Sharp rose, rose has a what you call needle, like needle, yeah. tones. Uh, nobody making making sharp uh, the tones. Nobody making pills of the beans. So they all are comes comes from nature and no cause there. They believe like that. Uh, but then and also uh, fire go up, water go down. So nobody made, no one made it. It's just go like that without cause. They believe like that. So Nagajuna, when he made this poor asset, made all so many enemies. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Among the even the Buddhism also. So then, uh, so we are. Um, I w I'm going to um, talk about how the child made their debate. So from that we can understand, we can get a point. Uh, this is Samjaya, Samjaya is saying, okay, thanks, we are, we are just arising from itself. This we need, need to know self, what does it mean self? For example, usually we think when we plant a rice seed and uh, get rice uh, harvest, Harvest, right? Is it harvest, right? Harvest. Uh, without analyze, we think rice comes from rice. We think rice is born from rice, right? But a little in the samchaya doesn't mean that rice come from like that self. But this is not philosophical idea because this mm, rice come from shoot should come from seed. It's a completely different, right? And when you do analyze. But Samjaya, Samjaya, what they believe that everything already in hiding place. It's just for cause and condition appear here, but all actually already 